Hi everyone, how's it going? Today we are going to be making the smoke necklace, so let's get to it. So first things first, open up Blender and click General on the splash screen. We don't need any of those things, so press A for Select All and X for Delete and click Delete. Press 1 for front orthographic view. I've included a link in the description to an image of the smoke necklace. So I want you to download that and we're just going to add it to the scene now. So press shift A for add. And I want you to go down to where it says image and click reference. Find where you save the image of the smoke necklace. And click load reference image. Use your scroll wheel just to zoom in and get a better view. And there we go. So far, our general rule of thumb has been to start with a shape that most closely resembles what you're trying to make. But in the case of the smoke necklace, it doesn't really look like anything. And if you come across a situation like that, I would generally start by adding a plane. So press Shift A for add, go up to mesh, slide across and click on plane. Now you can't see it, if you press your middle scroll wheel and have a look, you can see it's just in a different plane. So press OR for rotate, X for rotate about the X axis, and type 90 on your numpad and press enter. Press 1 for front orthographic view. And because the shape is obscuring our picture, I want you to click the X-ray button in the top right hand corner. There we go. Now press TAB to get into edit mode. S for scale and just bring it down really small uh, press G for grab we're going to start at the bottom and we're going to work our way up so I'm just going to zoom in on that section there I'm going to click on the vertex and just move it so click on the click on that vertex there press G for grab and then just move the other one in beside it don't worry too much about the point at this stage Click on that vertex and just grab it in so that it's uh, hitting the edges of the smoke necklace behind it to about there. And now we're just going to extrude to those top two vertices and follow the shape. So press C for circle select and just select those top two vertices. Right click to get out of that. Press E for extrude, move it up. S for scale, just make it a little bit wider. G for grab or for rotate and just scale it a little bit more. There we go. We're going to do this all the way up. So E for extrude or for rotate, S for scale, G for grab. You get the idea. I'm just going to speed this next bit up. I'm just going to put up a picture there of the back of the necklace and you can see that it follows into a point at the back. So that's where I'm going to leave it there. The next step is to follow along this arm here. I'm just going to double tap A for deselect all. C for circle select and I'm going to select those vertices on the left hand side as far as that point there. Right click to confirm. Press E for extrude and just move those vertices out ever so slightly there. That's good. And I'm just going to move each of those vertices into position manually. So click on the one on the top there, G for grab, and move it so that it's lining up with the picture in the background there. That's perfect. Double tap A for deselect all. C for circle select. I'm going to select those two vertices there. E for extrude. And just follow down that arm there. S if you need to scale it or if you need to rotate it and G if you want to grab it and put it somewhere else. E for extrude, E for extrude again, that's going to go to about there, S for scale and E for extrude one last time. 
we want to press S for scale and get those last two points fairly close together. Just going to grab them into position there. Okay, now press double tap A for deselect all, C for circle select, and I just want you to pick the vertices that are on the left hand side of that shape, just there. If I click to confirm, press E for extrude, move it out a little bit, or for rotate, just to get them in line, G for grab, and then just manually move about any vertices that are a little bit out of place like that. G for grab. There we go. Double tap A for deselect all. C for circle select. And I just want you to select those two vertices there. E for extrude. S for scale if you need to. Or for rotate. G for grab. These keys are going to become second nature. We use them so often. E for extrude, or for rotate, E for extrude, or for rotate, S for scale to bring it in a little bit, E for extrude, S for scale, E for extrude, I'm going to leave that there, E for extrude, or for rotate, S for scale, E for extrude, I'm going to rotate that ever so slightly and scale it. Lovely, double tap A to deselect all. Now we're going to come into a, a bit of a problem here because the section that we want to bring down is going to overlap with the faces we already have and it's better if that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide a section of the necklace I'm going to move this section slightly forward towards us and then I'm going to unhide everything and we'll carry on. So press 3 on your keyboard for face select, press C for circle select and I just want you to select everything to about there. Right click to confirm and I want you to press H on your keyboard and that's for hide. Excellent. Now press 2 on your keyboard for edge select mode and I want you to select that edge at the top there and we're going to turn on proportional editing. That little radio button there. Press and hold your middle scroll wheel to get a better view of what you're doing. I want you to press G for grab and Y for Y direction only. That should move it in that plane. Using your scroll wheel to change the sphere of influence just make sure that uh, the planes are away from the image basically. Left click to confirm, press 1 on your numpad for front orthographic view, press Alt H to unhide all and double tap A to deselect all. Press 1 on your keyboard for vertex select mode and I'm just going to move uh, those two there up so that they hit that corner on the image. So I'm just going to click and shift and left click again, G for grab, oh. Don't forget to turn off proportional editing. Click that radio button there. G for grab and just move it so it's about there. Okay, double tap A for deselect all. C for circle select. I'm gonna use my scroll wheel just to make it a little bit smaller. There we go, right click to confirm. E for extrude and just pull it out a little bit because you want the top to be quite skinny still. And now we're going to manually move these vertices into position. So I'm going to click that one there, G for grab. And I'm going to move these ones around so that they're a little bit closer together. There we go. Click uh, that one, G for grab. And this one, G for grab. Move it across to there, just to the corner. So I'm just going to select those two vertices there. Shift and left click to select it. And we go back onto the same train again, the E for extrude and then S, OR and G for scale, rotate and grab. And we're just going to finish off as far as just before the hole for the neck chain goes in. So E for extrude, and about there, S for scale, OR for rotate, E for extrude. Uh, S for scale or for rotate and grab that over a little bit. 
do for extrude. S for scale. Grab that there. E for extrude. And go nice and skinny on the bottom there. There we go. Now I'm just going to select these uh, vertices here on the right hand side of that shape. So you can click on that vertex there and press control and left click and it should select all the vertices in between. So press E for extrude and just push them out so you can see them. And then manually move those vertices one by one. So G for grab, I'm gonna move it in nice and close. There we go. And then I'm just gonna click on the top two there, E for extrude, or for rotate, S for scale, G for grab. E for extrude, or for rotate, S for scale. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it there for the time being. So now is as good a time as any to save your progress. So up to the top left hand corner, press file and press save. And once you've filled in a name, press save blender file. If you press and hold your middle scroll wheel to get a look at the shape, I'm just going to turn off the empty there. That's our picture. You can see that we've got a where we moved it out ever so slightly is giving us a slightly funny shape. So what I'm going to do is the section that's in front. So that's including all of that there. I'm going to just leave it all in the same plane. So what I want you to do is press three on your keyboard for face select mode. And I want you to select all the faces um, on the section that's slightly forward. There's not too many of them, so I'm just going to do it manually. There we go. And press three on your numpad to get the right orthographic view. And I want you to press S for scale, Y for Y direction only, and zero, and press enter. And now if you press and hold your middle scroll wheel, you see that all of those are in the same plane. I'm just going to turn our image back on. Press one on your keyboard to get vertex select mode. Double tap A to deselect all. And now what I want you to do is get a little bit creative and artistic. And I want you to start moving and twisting these uh, shapes around so that we get more of a twisty organic feel to them. So I'm going to press, I'm going to use um, edge select for that. So I'm going to press two on my keyboard for edge select mode. I'm going to turn on proportional editing because I want everything to be a very smooth movement. And just for instance, that edge there. So I'm going to press or for a rotate, uh, Z for Z direction only. And I'm just going to twist it forward like that ever so slightly and left click when I'm happy with it. I'm going to turn off the image now just to get a better view of my shape. And I'm going to turn off the X-ray toggle as well. Move it around to get a better view of it. And I'm going to prick this edge here or for rotate Z for Z direction only bring in the sphere of influence a little bit. I want to twist it a bit more that way. And left click to confirm. What I'm thinking now is I'm going to move that little point there further back, but I don't want it to affect this bit here. So if you want to move a section without affecting another area, just hide the area that you don't want affected. So I'm going to press three for face select mode. And I am going to press C for circle select. And I don't want any of this stuff affected by what I'm going to do next. Or that, in fact. So I'm just going to select them too. I'm just going to press, I do want that one to be affected, H for hide. And it's gone. I'm going to press 1 for vertex select mode, C for select. And I'm going to select those three vertices there. I'm going to press G for grab, Y for Y direction only. And I'm going to move in the sphere of influence because I want it to give it a little bit of a curve there. Like so, left click when you're happy. 
and Alt and H will unhide everything again. <laughs> That's probably a bit far, actually. <laughs> The other thing you can do is just turn off proportional editing. So I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to double tap A for deselect all. Circle select it just for those three there. I'm going to press G for grab Y for Y direction only and just move it manually like that. Okay. I think I want to move those three back, but with proportional editing. So I'm just going to press G for grab Y for Y direction only and just move it until you're happy with it. You can always go back and change it. Left click to confirm. I'm going to move these three forward. But I don't want to affect what's behind it. So I'm just going to hide the section behind it before I do that. Three on my keyboard for face select mode. C for circle select. I'm just going to hide all those bits there. H for hide. One. For vertex select mode, double tap A to make sure everything's deselected. Circle select those. G for grab, Y for Y direction only. Increase the sphere of influence so I can really push that forward like so. Alt H. Okay, and now that it's got that swoop that way, I'm going to pull those three vertices back ever so slightly. So circle select, I'm just going to make sure those three aren't selected and I'm going to hide what is selected. Circle select those three again. G for grab, Y for Y direction only, and bring in the sphere of influence and left click to confirm. Alt H to see the hidden geometry. Now we're getting there. Now this section up here is going to be where we're putting the hoop for attaching our necklace chain onto. And I want that to be kind of centered. So I'm going to move that section back a little bit. I'm going to, I don't want to affect this bit here. So I'm just going to press three on my keyboard for face select mode, C for circle select. I'm going to select all of those there because I don't want them affected. And I'm going to press H for hide. Press one on my keyboard for vertex select mode. I'm going to select those two vertices up there. Seven on my numpad to get the top orthographic view. Press G for grab, Y for Y direction only. Might increase the sphere of influence of that a little bit. About there. And I want to put it where the 3D cursor is because that's more or less dead center. And left click to confirm. Alt H to unhide. And we are getting there. I'm going to go to edge select mode by pressing two on the keyboard and I am going to rotate that one around the Z axis a little bit. Yeah, I think so like that. And I'm letting it affect everything because you have to treat the necklace as a, as a whole. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I think maybe the direction of this one is wrong, but we're going to leave it where it is for now and just tweak it when it's solidified. So we're going to do that now. We're going to apply a solidify modifier to it. So on the right hand side where you see the little monkey wrench, click add modifier. And underneath the generate tab, I want you to pick solidify. And on the right hand side where it says thickness, if you press and hold and move your mouse, you'll see that it's giving you a thickness. So don't go mad, I would say. That looks about right there. 0.08, we'll go for that. Um, 0.07 actually, I clicked that. I'm just gonna press and hold my middle scroll wheel to get a better view. And yeah, I think that's gonna look nice. Tab to go into object mode because you can't apply modifiers in edit mode. Go over to the drop down list on the right hand side and click apply. And now when you go back into edit mode by pressing tab, you'll see you have access to all those vertices and lines on the back there, which is what you want. I'm also going to give it a subdivision surface modifier so we can see smooth shapes basically. So the monkey wrench, click on that, click add modifier and pick subdivision surface. And on the right hand side, I want you to up those two numbers to three. 
press tab to go into object mode. There we go. That looks nice. Everything's a little bit too uniform at the minute. So we're going to go back into edit mode and we're going to start pulling all the faces and lines around until we get a more pleasing shape. So press tab to go back into edit mode. Leave the subdivision surface modifier switched on because it gives you a better idea of how it's operating. And let's see now. Press one on your keyboard for vertex select mode. And again, for this next section, I don't want you to be checking the, uh, the original image too much because what you're trying to do is just make a pleasing shape. So I'm going to grab that vertex there, press G and decrease the sphere of influence and just pull it out a little bit like so. And what I'm going for here is I want that to be a little bit scooped in. So I'm just going to pull the vertex above it out a little bit as well. So it's just G for grab. So just move it out. Doesn't have to be too far. Left click to confirm. You can see I've already got a nice little, I'll just press tab to go into object mode there. You can see that's improved that section quite a lot. So basically the next step is a matter of personal taste. All you have to do is go around pulling vertices around until you get a more pleasing shape. And what you're looking for is kind of like natural smoke. You're looking for scoops and points and that kind of thing. I'm not describing it very well, but this is one of those processes where you just have to try it out. You just have to go with your gut and where you think it needs to be a bit fatter, pull the vertices out where you think it needs to be a little bit skinnier, you know, pull the vertices in. So just press tab to go back into edit mode. If you're a little bit reticent about this next step, then what you can do is save a copy. So you can always come back to it if you think you've made a mistake. So what, you, what I want you to do is go up to the top left hand corner, press file, press save, and then press file again and press save as, and then just call it something. If you'd called it smoke, just call it say smoke two and press save as. And if you, find after you've been playing around with this shape for a while that you're not happy with it you can always just open up the original one and start again so this next step is really just a question of personal taste i want you to have fun with it you know move the vertices around try create thicker areas try create a nice feeling of flow but don't worry too much there's no right or wrong way to do this this is your model it's your necklace so you know just get a feel for it and start moving vertices around you can always press Control z for undo if you think you made a mistake so i'm just going to speed up this next bit and i'm i'm going to play around with the vertices and i suggest you do the same i'll see you in a few minutes The temptation with Blender is very often to keep putting in more vertices so that you've got more control, but it can get out of hand. So I always try to manipulate the shape with as few vertices as possible. Um, but I've come up against a brick wall here because what I want to do is I want to create a little scoop in this area here and I can't because there's no vertices there. I'm going to put in an edge loop grudgingly because I really do believe 
the simpler you keep your mesh, the better. So Control or will put in an edge loop, uh, left click to confirm, and I'm going to put it dead center. So right click to get it to stay dead center. And now I can move around these vertices here and give me more, a more definition in that scoop. I'm coming up with the same issue here on this leg that I want to put a little scoop in there. So uh, I'm just going to put in another edge loop. So control or left click, right click. And on I go again. And again, I'm coming across this section here. If you see it in object mode, it's like it's fighting. That bit needs to go down. So I'm going to put in another edge loop. Okay, I'm happy with what I have there. It's a very organic looking shape. It looks a little bit like smoke. That's what we're after. But our next step is going to be putting the chain hoop on this section here. So tab back into edit mode, press three on your keyboard for face select mode. And I want to select that top face there. I'm gonna press three on my numpad for right orthographic view. And basically, I'm going to press E for extrude. I'm just going to pull that up like that. Just a fraction. I'm going to press S for scale, Z for Z direction only, and press zero. And press enter. So that means they're all in the same plane, which is what I want. So just press G for grab to kind of position it about there. I want it kind of on the central line. E for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab, E for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab. I'm just going to bring that round basically and attach it back onto the necklace. So E for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab. E for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab. Uh, e for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab, something about there. You can always adjust these afterwards, I just want to get the bulk of it in there. Uh, e for extrude, or for rotate, G for grab, 
G for extrude or for rotate, G for grab. And I think one more just for luck, E for extrude or for rotate, G for grab. Okay, I'm going to rotate that a bit more. Right there. Grab that. I'm just going to move around these. So if you want to select an entire loop, double tap A to deselect all. Press 1 for vertex select mode. Alt and left click, and that will select the entire loop there. G for grab. I'm just going to move them around so they make more of a circle shape. So Alt and left click. And just make it a little bit tighter. Oh. Alt and left click. There we go. Grab, I'm going to rotate that a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Alt and left click, grab. There we go. Oop, selected the wrong one there. Double tap A. Alt and left click, grab. Alt left click to get that one. And double tap A. Alt and left click. Actually, I'm just going to go to face select mode and select that face there. G for grab. I'm going to go for about there. Okay. And, oh, sorry about that. Just zoom in there. I'm going to delete that face. So press X for delete and select faces. And now I'm just going to do what we did with the triple swirl necklace. I'm going to add in an extra edge loop that roughly matches where that one is. So three for right orthographic view, control or to get that edge loop there, left click to select, I'm going to move, drop it down to about there, uh, left click to confirm and I'm going to delete that face there, so three on your keyboard to get to face select mode, select that face there, X for delete, select faces, Press 2 on your keyboard for edge select mode and I'm going to select these edges here and here. And up in the edge menu, click that, we're going to do our old friend bridge edge loops. And there we go. There we have it. So I'm just going to press 3 for right orthographic view and zoom out and make sure that that is more or less central on it because it needs to be, you want the center of gravity to be about right for where your chain is sitting. And I think that looks pretty nice. Yep, see how it looks from the front. I want to extend it up actually. So I'm just gonna go press X-ray mode, C for circle select, I'm gonna select all of that. And I don't need those two. Ah, <laughs> press three, go to face select mode, it'll be easier. Here we go. G for grab, Z for Z direction only, and just pull it up. I'm also going to rotate it round a little bit like that. G for grab, and about there. Turn off X-ray, go into object mode to get a better view. Yep, I think I want to make that a little bit thicker along the front there. And perhaps a bit wider, so tab in. I am going to put in an edge loop, so control or left click. And one to go to vertex select mode. I'm just going to select all of these central ones and move them out a little bit. Make sure I've got the right one. And this one, I'm going to go the opposite direction. Uh, this one here, sorry. Grab Y. Right there. And this one. There's good. 
and I think looking at it from the front I'd like that to follow a nicer curve so I'm just going to grab these two here like that way same here The two of those. Grab X and just move it out. And same here. It, this is kind of like what we were doing in the bottom section. It's just trying to make the shape work. And that is up to your own personal taste. Now for me, that vertex there needs to either go in or this one needs to come out. So we'll try that one. Left click, and grab X, move that in, move that there, tab it out just to get a better view. I'm going to move some of these faces out a little bit as well. So three on my keyboard for face select mode, circle select, I'm just going to select these. Uh, one, press G for grab. X for X direction, just pull them out like that. Left click, tab it out. It's better. What do I want to do? I'm going to press one there, circle select, and I'm only going to select the outside vertices there because I'm going to move them out except for you you're out far enough and just grab X pull it out like so and possibly you grab X tab into object mode just to get a better view there's a scoop there that I don't want Tab back in. Who is it? It's you. Grab X. There we go. Pull that out. Grab X. There. Tab into object mode. Okay. I'm just going to straighten up that top there because <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to be not level so tab back in and I'm just gonna select three on my keyboard I'm gonna select those two there go back to the front view G for grab or for rotate and just level that off so there yeah Press and hold your middle scroll wheel to get a better view. So the only thing we're worried about is obviously how big is that hole. Um, on the smoke necklace, because I printed it quite big, that hole was actually about four millimeters. So I'm gonna create a circle that's four millimeters, and then I'm gonna scale this down to fit it. I'm just gonna press H to hide it for a second. And press Shift A for add, pick mesh, and just pick circle. And click on the bottom left hand corner where it says radius type in 2 mm for two millimeters press enter okay now that was in the wrong plane we want to rotate it around the y-axis so press or for rotate y for around the y-axis and type in 90 and press enter okay i'm going to switch the uh shape back on going to go into x-ray mode hit on the x-ray toggle button so that we can see both the the other shape I'm gonna click on my shape and press s for scale and just keep going down there zoom in using my scroll wheel and you can see the circle there I'm just going to go three for right orthographic G for grab and just move it up there till we see how we're doing size wise and 
that's pretty close. I think our shape needs to go up a little bit bigger. So S for scale. Let's move it away. Select the circle, G for grab. Let's move it up to it. And that's pretty good. So we don't need the circle anymore. We know our shape is roughly the right size. Just press X for delete and click delete. Uh, turn off the X-ray mode. Just find your shape again, select it, press the period on your numpad. And we're done. So save the file, file save, and export the STL. File, export, STL. It'll offer you the right name, just press export STL. And you're ready to send that file to Shapeways. We're done. That's how you make the smoke necklace. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to buy me a coffee, then there is a link in the description. And I will see you in the next video. See you then.